let's get started with making our hat. Now, an additional tool that I have here that was not mentioned in the materials is a stitch marker. And in earlier videos, I have explained that a stitch marker can be either a plastic one such as this or a long piece of yarn that will just help keep track of where our stitches are. In this case, I am using a plastic stitch marker and this is just something that's very helpful. You can buy these on Amazon. In fact, I will link a, um, I will put a link in the description below. So getting started, according to our instructions, we are to chain four and join with a slip stitch to form the ring. Now, first we need to make a slip knot. So I'm gonna leave a long enough tail so that it can be weaved in later. Hook this around my finger. Take this behind the first loop and pull the first loop and I'm pulling it taut with that string that is not attached to the ball, the skein of yarn. Now we have our slip knot. Let's insert our hook. And there we have our slip knot. And we can pull it tighter or looser depending on what we need. Now we can chain four. One, two, three, four. So now that we have chain four, we can slip stitch into the first chain here. Insert our hook, yarn over, pull through once, pull through again. And that makes a ring in this middle here. Now this is just one way of making a ring for a crocheting in the round type of object. Um, this isn't necessarily my preferred way, but here we are following the instructions. So now that we have formed our ring, let's start with round one. Round one, we are going to chain three, one, two, three. And this will count as our double crochet throughout. So this is very common in patterns. There we go. We, um, clip this on the, first, on the uh, top chain here to note that this is a double crochet. This is very common that you'll find in patterns that chains will count as stitches. So often it is one chain for a single crochet or two for a half double crochet. In this case it's three for a double crochet. Now we will work 11 double crochet into the ring and then we will join with a slip stitch to the first double crochet. So first things first, let's make those 11 double crochet. And by the end, we will have 12 because our 11 double crochet plus our chain three equals 12 double crochet. So let's make all of these double crochet come true and I will see you at the end. Alright, so I'm going to actually check to make sure how many double crochet that I have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need one more to make that eleven. Now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, plus our chain three, which gives us twelve. We are going to slip stitch into that top chain there. So insert our hook, yarn over, pull it through once, pull it through twice, and there we go. We have completed round one. Moving on to round two. We are to chain three. One, two, three. Let's insert our stitch marker. 
and we're going to double crochet in the same stitch so just um, the bottom where that is right there just going to insert our double crochet here and we will put two double crochet in each double crochet around so this is our increase round and when you are working in the round you will have um, increase rounds until you reach the size necessary to then level off the hat and go downward so in here we are simply increasing our hat to make sure it is big enough to match the circumference and the um, size of our head and by the end of this round you will have 24 I will see you at the end of this round all right one more one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. So we have our twenty-four double crochet. We will now slip stitch. There's our completion of round two. And now let's move on to round three with chain three for our first double crochet. And we will put two double crochet in the next stitch. So we have one here and we will put two this next stitch there we go and throughout this round we will be following this same pattern of one double crochet two double crochet one double crochet two double crochet so only increasing every other stitch Next one will be two, then one, <laughs> mistake there, one, and then two in the next. I always want to be careful and constantly counting and just double checking. And I will see you at the end where you should have 36 double crochet. All right, now we are finished with round three. Make sure you check your stitches to add that you have 36 double crochet. Going on to round four. After we do our slip stitch, of course. So in round four, once again, starting with our chain three. We're going to double crochet in the next stitch. So we have our first double crochet in our first stitch and I double crochet in our next stitch but then we will put two double crochet in the next stitch so this is very similar to round three except we are going to be putting two double crochet in between every increase so the pattern would be one one two one one and then the next one will have two
And once again, this is just furthering the increase. some more yarn here one one now we have two to insert into this one by the end of this round we will have 48 We will have 48 double crochet and we'll see you at the end of the round. Now we are finished with round four and you should have 48 stitches. It's then, it basically we've been counting by 12 this whole time, 12, 24, 36, 48. Now we are going to join the beginning of our round so that we can get ready for round five. Chain three. One, two, three. And round five will be very similar to rounds three and four. What we're going to do is we're going to double crochet in the next Four, one, two, three, then four. Then we will put two double crochet in the next double crochet. So while not following the multiplying by 12 pattern, um, we are still following the pattern of there being stitches in between increases. In this case, we have five stitches in between increases. One, two, three, four, then five. So we will insert one, two, three, four, five before our next increase. So since we're not following our multiples of 12 anymore, in this case, we are going to end up with 56 double crochet, excuse me, a little tangle there, 56 double crochet, okay, let me just see where we are, one, two, three, four, five, time for another increase, and I will see you at the end of round five with 56 double crochet. Now that we have finished round five, on the instructions, it says rounds six through 14 will be basically double crocheting around. So this is the part of the hat where we have fit the top of our head, and now we are moving from the top of our head to the length of the head. So I'm gonna fold this to show that basically we are moving downwards. And as you move, it will no longer expand. It will start curving down. And that is what we are going for, for the next, I believe about eight rounds. So let's start round six. Round six will be identical to every following round. Slip stitch, chain three, one, two, three. Insert our stitch marker. And we are just double crocheting around. Hats, scarves, uh, patterns where you will be doing the same stitch over and over again are perfect for trying to perfect how these particular stitches work. And by the end of this, by the end of this, you'll be very good at double crocheting. So this will continue until round 14. And remember at the end of each round, you'll just be slip stitching, then doing that chain three until you have 
one, two, three, four, five, six, 14 stitches or 14 rounds. So here is, I have a few stitches left to go, but I wanted to take this time to measure this hat um, as far as testing the gauge. It is something that we mentioned earlier, but it is not something that we have actually measured yet. Now, usually you'd want to check your gauge, not when you're actually finished but as you're moving along just to make sure that the tension is correct now to check the gauge with you know just to make sure that the sizing is correct we know that 11 double crochet equals 4 inches which means we need to have 11 inches in these uh, um, in these four we need to have 11 double crochet in these four inches and excuse me for not having a clear one so I'm just testing one of the rounds here so the four inches is here okay let's see how many we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13. So it's about 13 inches. Sorry, 13 double crochet. Which means that my tension was a bit tight. So more than likely, this will be a little under the finished size. Um, and when something like that happens, when your tension is a bit too tight, you would go up a hook. So instead of using a 5.5, it would have benefited me to use a 6 millimeter hook just so I could get the tension that I needed, the gauge that I needed. Now, I'm supposed to have 7 rows and 4 inches. Let's test that as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So once again, Excuse my chair making a noise. Once again, we find that the tension is just a little bit too tight. And so I would have benefited from getting a slightly bigger hook, which is fine. Um, sometimes these things happen, which is why we check something like gauge. Again, we tend to check it a little sooner, but it's good to check it um, even just now. So I would know that um, this hat is just a little bit too small, but that is just fine. Um, another great way to actually check your gauge before you even start a project would be to make a 4x4. Four four. Let's see if we can focus in on this. Thank you. A 4x4 four four swatch. And with the recommended hook in this case it is a 5x5 five five. and you would again check okay um, 12 single crochet is supposed to equal 4 inches and 15 rows of those single crochet is supposed to equal 4 inches so you can make a swatch of 12 across 15 rows and then check the gauge to see oh, maybe I need to go up a hook or even go down, uh, which, like I said, is fairly common. That's why in the pattern it says to use any size hook 
to obtain the specified gauge. So this is something that is very important, especially when new experience doesn't matter. Gauge is very important. And so now that we know that this head is a little bit too small, that's totally fine. I'm still going to finish it off. This will actually be a great little gift for my cousin <laughs> so that she'll have something. Maybe not for this year because it's starting to warm up, but she'll definitely have it for next year. And she's small, so she'll definitely get some wear out of it. And now we have finished with a slip stitch at the beginning. We can now fasten off. Want to leave quite a bit of yarn so that we can weave in. And now we can weave in, which is a process that I've done in an earlier video and that we will do here. So to weave in, you will need a yarn needle like so. And what we're going to do So I'm going to pull close the top here, as close as I can. I'm going to take my yarn needle. You're looking for something that has a really big eye. Now, I, mine's a little bent. This is manufactured this way, by the way, and it's meant for amigurumi. But um, there are other styles. I have another one here. Yarn needle that's, I think, was actually meant for felt. But as long as it's something that you can pull the yarn through, and then it's kind of like sewing. So I'm going in one way just to tighten it around. Then. I'm not going to go in the way that it came. I'm just going to skip that. I'm going to go in the other way. I'm pulling that through. So in weaving it through, as explained before, it's basically securing your work. Making sure that, you know, this goes into a washing machine or through regular wear and tear. These strings are not gonna come out. They're not gonna unravel. And I'm gonna go the other way. There we go. And we are going to you can tie a knot here if you like. It's actually pretty secure. So I don't have to do that, but there we go. Making sure that we are super secure. That's why you have to leave a long tail. And now we're going to do this portion here. Again, long tail. Always important. And what I'm going to do is gonna shimmy my way upwards 
there's a lot of ways you can do this. But I'm going to shimmy myself upwards until I get to those, the back portion of the double crochet. So that I can go behind them and go through them. There we go. And then go through again. Then we're going to go through one more time. Again, this is why you have a long tail. You can weave through as much as you need. Now, I actually have embroidery scissors. I don't know why I'm using these. <laughs> but that's from the yarn. There you go. This is a finished hat. This is us applying our skills to a project. Next, we will be making a scarf. Thank you, and I hope to see you again.